So my deconstructionist from Christianity who used this argument, I'm going to take this argument away from you, but I'm going to refine it right back to you. Many deconstructionists, as well as Christians as well, like to use Galatians 4 to say that the Bible is allegorical, that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all those people in the Bible, they didn't exist because Paul wrote in Galatians that they are allegorical and they should be taken as allegories. And saying that they didn't exist and the Bible admitting that they didn't exist is one of the ways that many people use, one of the arguments that many people use to deconstruct from Christianity. But as we discussed in our live today, my live on Facebook and YouTube that starts at around 1030 a.m. Monday through Friday, this question was asked, this question was brought up concerning it being allegory based on Galatians 4. And here's the reality and how that argument should be used. Although many things in the Bible uh, are taken as allegories in today's mindset, in today's doctrine, the people who wrote the Bible during the time frame that they were written took all these stories as being literal and they had to take them as being literal. You see, if you say that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are not literal beings, then what you are destroying for both the Jewish people as well as the Christians is the bloodline that is required in order for Jesus to fit the prophecies of coming from the house of David. So even when Paul was writing this and he was saying it was allegorical, what he was meaning is that the stories can be used as allegories for how we should live our lives and how we should be as Christians and so on and so forth. But he wasn't meaning that the actual characters were allegorical and never existed because it would destroy that bloodline. So Jesus cannot be the Messiah without that bloodline. You need Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the way up to what Boaz, Ruth, and Obadiah, Jesse, David, Solomon, Solomon's sons, and on, on up to Jesus. You got to have that bloodline or you can't have Jesus as your Messiah from the house of David. So that's why they had to have taken it literally and not allegorical. I know a lot of deconstructionists love to use that argument and it kind of just threw it under the bus that the, even the Christians didn't think that it was allegorical. But let us recognize this. As deconstructionists, we have to look at this story and say that those people believed it literally that they existed. But yet there is absolutely zero archeological evidence that any of these people existed, nor do they fit any of the archeological time frames of history. At no point in time did a kingdom of Israel exist where it was not a tributary of another power, whether it was the Assyrians, the Arcadians, whether it were well, they weren't around during the Arcadians, whether it was the Babylonians or the Persians or the Greeks or the Romans, at no time did a nation of Israel, as described in the Bible, ever exist. There's no time that there were um, letters or seals of David that was sent in between whoever the kingdom of Israel would have been a vassal state of during that time frame, which most likely would have been during the time frame of the Assyrians or the nubio comedic because the nubio comedic controlled that land off and on for multiple dynasties. So there were no information passed between the two kingdoms, not even when the Bronze Age collapsed and the Phoenicians were the majority power people in that area and then they were usurped by the Assyrians. There is no communication between the two as far as a kingdom of these people existing. Uh, you do have some instances of of coins being made by Solomon's grandson, which would validate Solomon's grandson possibly more than likely existed. Does that mean that Solomon and David existed? No. In the same way that um, Haile Selassie claims to be from the dynasty of the sun between Solomon and Sheba, there is absolutely no proof of that. And people may like to make claims of heredity that give them some type of ancestry that gives them royalty. So even though, uh, the grandson of Solomon is said to have existed more than likely possibly did. We cannot validate that. So that doesn't validate, validate Solomon because he could have just claimed a house of David since it was a legendary story like King Arthur that was in existence at that time frame. So historically, 
this bloodline still does not exist in the sense of reality but only in the sense of people making claims to it and that is like me claiming to be from the line of Shaka Zulu or claiming to be from the line of Mansa Musa I can claim it and have no absolutely zero facts archaeology paperwork documentation nothing to prove it but I can just claim it and that's pretty much what they have done because they are without facts and without proof but y'all have a great day and remember always you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable good journey good vibration